Hello, welcome to our church service at Livitzut. My name is Tia. Uh, my name is Yamina. So great that you are with us. So please write in the chat where you come from, and so we get to know each other. And there's a chat pastor who will be present during the whole uh, whole church service. Should you have questions? And uh, I believe so. Friday, I had some friends over. It was a uh, it was so nice to be able to gather again after the corona. And what did you do? Uh, well, uh, so it was a free uh, weekend with some sunshine. That was uh, to uh, to recharge. So today we are going to listen to Christian Okayem. He has got a uh, uh, preaching which is called uh, uh, "Stable Faith in a Shaky Time." It, this sounds very uh, 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 current. So if you have been following the news. Uh, so tonight, uh, uh, we are going to uh, pray, uh, pray for Ukraine. And uh, if you need uh, intercession, please mail us at uh, burn at libitsu.se so we can toge stand together in prayer with you. So now, now it's time for the church service so we can praise God ev even from our couch. So, my dear church, uh, we are ready to celebrate the church service and welcome and um, receive what the Lord has for you this Sunday. We come with open heart uh, and open mind uh, before Him, and we come with a willingness to praise Him. So, let us stand together. And we will make ourselves ready in order to uh, pre uh, praise Him. It's important to celebrate the church service. It's always been like that, but particularly now, it's even more important than ever to gather and to praise and exhort the Lord. So we start with a Bible text. So open your heart and receive this Bible text. This is from Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. I let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue, to be my rock of my refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, and for your sake, uh, lead me and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Father, we thank you for this Sunday. We praise you because we can come before you with open heart, open mind. We thank you because we can step into the praise and worship. Thank you because we can receive the word that is to be preached today. We praise you. Because you are our rock, you are our fortress, you are our refuge in this time and also in the time to come. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise God together. We can, we can with boldness praise him, thank him. Gud, jag vill 
We shall introduce a song which can be new for many of you, but let me just share a few verses. So the, the Bible is full of these wonderful uh, praises, and in Philippians 2, and there's a hymn which is well known, full of richness and rich theology. Let me just read this verse before we sing this song. So Paul wrote uh, this about Jesus. 
he was uh, of the figure of God, but he did not consider himself equal to God, but rather he gave himself and uh, took upon himself the figure of a servant. And out, outward, he was like a man. He humbled himself, and he was obedient uh, even unto death, death upon the cross. That's why has God uh, exalted him over everything and gave him everything that is above uh, his name, above every other name, so that before Jesus' name, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under us, and all tongues shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. God, uh, praise to God the Father. Such fantastic uh, verses. And the song that we are going to sing now is built uh, largely upon this hymn, and this fantastic uh, hymn. It's so great when you think about this. This hymn was written uh, 2,000 years ago. And uh, it is even uh, uh, relevant today and for the future. And, uh, and it means that as we sing this song, uh, well, the text is uh, slightly different, but the spirit in the, uh, with which we sing is nothing new. We do this, and today uh, we are joining this hymn, which has been uh, repeated thousands in 2,000 years. It is going to resound from all it, for all eternity in order to exhort the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So as we sing this song, join with your heart. Maybe the melody can be new and the text can be new, but the same spirit with your heart. And so if you are going through some tough uh, period, if you are living, going through uh, resistance, re exhort King Jesus. If you are in a time of uh, disquietude and uh, exhort the King Jesus. Sista andetag och allt tog slut Men inte som vi kunnat tro För då skakade vår jord Förlåt rev sin tur Ett evigt offer gavs Himlen ropar Genom tid och rum Då träd 
för livets konung i. För i en kall mörk grad, där vår Herre lär, tar andet andet tag, och där förändras
Let's continue. We sing a new song to you. We praise you. We thank you for the worship that rises from your people. We thank you, Lord, because we can be this praise and worshiping people. Uh, we can be a part of all the saints that this very day are gathered over the whole earth in order to praise your name. We say we are in freedom while others have to hide, and we praise you. We praise you that today, today we cry out. Hallelujah, and we worship you from our heart. We praise you because when we praise you, then the chains and fetters shall fall from this dark world. We praise you because in praise and worship, there is power to break the fetters. There is a power to break, set free the captives. There is the power. There is power in the worship and strength. In a worshiping church, uh, in a people that cry out, "Hallelujah, cry, Hallelujah, praise be to your name," and may this resound throughout all the earth, Hallelujah, and be a liberating power, Hallelujah. Praise be to your name. Praise be to your name, Hallelujah. Praise be to your name, Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to praise God.、Uh, we will remain standing. We have a, an obituary, a dear sister who has gone back home, and uh, this per, uh, obituary is about our beloved sister Brigitte Franson, and.、Uh, And we shall celebrate her life and the deeds of her life. So, Bigot Franson, she was 86, and she came to faith and was saved when as a 14-year-old. And after that, and she has followed the Lord, and、uh, throughout all her life, she served the sick, and that was important for her. And she worked within.、Uh, Uh, Medicare, and she was also educated to become a, a a nurse. That was her lifelong calling. So he, she came here to Uppsala, to this church, in order to come to the Bible school for two years. And she was a person full of care for others, and a very good seamstress. And when we uh, uh, emptied her flat, we found about eight to ten. Uh, uh, Bags of、uh, children's clothes that she has sewn, and、uh, they will be given to be sold at helping hand, and to the people in needs. And what characterized her was her warm faith in Jesus, and she's a true prayer person. She was survived by two、uh, brothers and sisters, and she's a friend of、uh, a member of Levitzul Church. So Isaiah says that. Uh, rejoice, those who have no, who are barren. Break out、uh, in, in in your joy, those who have not had the throw of birth, those who were、uh, who are alone shall have more children, more than those who have a husband. Let's thank God for Begita and to pray for her relatives. Lord,、uh, we thank you, thank you, because. The death of a saint is something beautiful in your eyes, and we thank you for Begita and her life's deeds. We thank you that that you shall your light shall shine、uh, brightly over her life and the the footsteps that she has traced out, her care for the other people, and that was part of her life's calling. And we thank you that we can follow those footsteps, and we can thank you and praise you. Because now she is at home with you, she is now in your arms and in your 
complete presence. And, and we thank you for Birgitta and uh, what she has signified for us. And uh, we thank you because now she is a part of the heavenly choir in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to praise the Lord. We praise you. Let's continue to sing this song, uh, this simple hallelujah, the simple hymn, and we shall lift up these prayer requests as we sing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise you because we can lift up these people who are sick and those who are in a difficult situation as we praise you as our hallelujah rise up to you we lift up these prayer requests before you we praise you because thou you shall operate through these praise and worship as we step into our worship we thank you because there we can find healing power we can find a liberating power we thank you because you shall heal we thank you because you shall set free. We thank you that you shall release, release us from our, our, our fetters and shackles. We thank you that this is a church that breaks out in our song of hallelujah. This shall release healing of a people. We thank you for this church that can release the healing power. We thank you your, because your name is above all the other names. We praise you. We exhort you. We praise you. We praise you. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Great to praise Him. And, uh, and uh, this is extremely important to celebrate church service and uh, to truly lift up our hearts before the Lord during this time. And there's such a freedom in praise. Uh, there's such a freedom uh, when God's uh, assembly gathers and uh, this freedom is released over the whole world. It's not just here. So as I said last Sunday, as we praise God, uh, we are also doing this on behalf of the Ukrainian people. As we praise God, we are carrying, carrying this terrible situation in our uh, heart. We release peace and uh, we release uh, liberty and freedom. We shall have a children's blessing we ha it's been difficult to have this uh, uh, during the pandemic, but now um, we can have a wonderful children's blessing. And this, they are, we, ha we have five uh, children who will be blessed. So uh, uh, as I read the family name, would you please come forward? So this is Sigerson with Ula and family Silverblood with uh, Anton. Uh, and Vasson with Leah, and uh, Wigfeld Jakobson with, with Levi, and uh, family Magasha with Ma uh, Matthias. And uh, please come forward. Let's give them an applause as they march forward. Great. So, welcome on the stage. 
so we get to have a good look at your 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 little bundle of uh, treasure let's give them one more big hand so jag tänker kära församling so dear church two things i'm thinking about now um concerning family and children one is that uh, the church uh, its uh, task is to support father and mother in their role of, as parents i believe i can say that uh, let me say this there are very few things which are as difficult as being parents and one thing during this time uh, well it's actually true all the time it's been a very tough thing for the ch uh, for the parents but in the church we have prayers we have support we have help uh, for your role as a parent and uh, this morning i was reading matthew 18 and uh, that so my our task we need to put the children in the center of our church so when the disciples came uh, in Matthew 18 so they asked who is the biggest uh, in the heaven in, in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus took a child and put him in the center and he said we need to be like children we need to be like children said he and he lifts up humility and uh, there's there's not too much arrogance uh, they know that they are utterly dependent uh, on their parents and uh, and on their uh, surroundings so we as a church we need to uh, also embrace these children they are a part of our church from the very first moment so a uh, children's work children's service that's not something on the side so that we can be sitting here without being disturbed we don't uh, put them aside or as some kind of uh, alternative church, uh, church service rather they are at the center they are part of God's kingdom and God's church so uh, so now we will get to <coughs> pray and receive these children we start with family Wigfeld Jakobson with Levi Levi Zacharias Uh, church please pray for Levi Zacharias father we thank you we praise you for Levi Zacharias we thank you because your grace is over him and we thank you that you will embrace him from all sides and we thank you that you will fill him with your grace through everything that he needs and we thank you in Jesus name amen there's a lot of power and life. I feels like he's going to eat up your your um, your earphone. So, church, let's pray for Leia. Let's pray for Leia. Father, we thank you for Leia. We thank you for the name which is which carries so much. We thank you for your grace and your power. We praise you. We thank you because you shall fill her with your kingdom and your grace you shall fill her with your power we thank you because that she will be able to uh, walk in predestined uh, path uh, to walk with you to follow you the rest of her life we thank you for good deeds we thank you for light strength and we thank you that her steps shall shall shall, shall be full of your blessing and your peace Amen. God bless you, Leah. We pray for Ula. Let's pray for Ula. Father, we thank you for Ula. We thank you, Lord, because of your grace over her, and uh, we, that the church, we shall embrace you with our prayer. We shall embrace you with our grace. We shall take you up. We praise you. We thank you. With your grace, uh, the Lord's grace shall be with you. It shall go with you. 
We thank you for a deep peace in your mind, a deep peace in your heart. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for protection for her body and soul in a time like this. For the time like this, we praise you and we send you out in Jesus, in the deeds of Jesus, in order to replicate His deeds. Amen. We have uh, El Elton. Well, let's pray for Elton. We thank you. We thank you for your hand of Elton and her whole, uh, his whole family. Thank you for your grace. We praise you. You shall embrace him. And uh, your grace and your power shall be in this body, into this soul, into this life. And uh, we praise you so that he shall follow your footsteps. These feet shall walk together with you uh, in your footsteps all his life, the entire life with Jesus, uh, surrounded by our prayer, surrounded by you. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for Matthias. Let's pray for Matthias. Let's reach out with our hands and pray for Matthias. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for Matthias. Matthias, we thank you because he will carry the name of an evangelist, the name of a, an apostle, Matthew. We thank you. We thank you that you shall uh, surround him from all sides. We as a church, we shall surround him. And uh, we thank you because he shall follow your footstep. He shall walk together with you and to be with you and to be surrounded by you the rest of his life. Amen. God bless you, Matthew, Mat Matthias. So we shall take up our offering. It's so great, so nice. Uh, we will take up uh, today's uh, offering. But before we do that, we will listen to a testimony from Louisa. And maybe you remember that uh, a few weeks ago we pray, we blessed, we took up an offering to a missions team which will go out in uh, Europe, Europe. She is one of one of them. Hello, all of you. It's so great to see all of you. Uh, my name is Lu Luisa, and uh, my, I'm a part of a. Uh, second, second year by Bible school students, and uh, we stopped uh, our second year last uh, uh, autumn. But we didn't want to stop our Bible school because it was so great. We spoke to Simon, so we were able to uh, extend this Bible school for half a year. And now we are out in a mission field the entire spring. We have just come home. We have had four weeks. We were in Norway first and then Poland. And God has done so many things. So let me just share a few things that he has done in these weeks. Let me start with what happened in Norway. We were, uh, we were evangelizing and we met a man. He was an alcoholic. And uh, and we spoke about uh, if we could pray for him. He said that he's got some problem with his eyes. He was he was uh, uh, vision impaired. So we lay our hands on her, on his eyes, and he was healed. Hallelujah. And uh, and uh, he felt God's love. He wanted to uh, receive Jesus. So God came to those uh, broken people, uh, and, and that was the first thing. And then we were uh, on our way home. We were in our car, and we started to pray. We started to pray. We feel like the Holy Spirit is very powerful. And we prayed, and we, I feel uh, like there's a, there's a burden in my heart for prayer. So we say, open a door uh, in a school in Poland. We felt that we are going to go into to a school in Poland. I feel 
we just uh, screamed uh, in the in the car so that the door is to be opened. We were screaming, uh, but it, it was like open the door, open the door of a school in Poland. We screamed and screamed, and and when we came home, and uh, so uh, so we were very hoarse, and because we prayed so much. And it was such a great feeling as we came to Poland. So the pastor said to us, "Well, you know, I spoke to a school, and you can go there for a whole day in the school with all the classes." And, and uh, there was a lot of children. Almost every single class, there was someone who wanted to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It was just awesome. And these are just a few things God has healed so many people. We've seen so many people saved and touched by love of Jesus. Let me just encourage you. This is not just happening on, in the mission field. This is happening in Uppsala. So let me just encourage you to go out, and uh, God is with you. Jesus has said that, follow me, I shall make you unto fishers of man. So we will just follow Jesus. He is the one who will make us unto fishers of man. So let's give our life to Jesus, and he shall use us, all of us. So there's so much, there's so much potential in this room. We can change the entire Uppsala together. Do you believe in that? That's what I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> that was uh, great. And uh, during the a week a weekend, they went to Sonsva, where they will evangelize. So and they, and uh, they are going. They are going to Bulgaria, to Z Serbia, to Croatia, and to Albania. They wish, shall come back at the end of May. Let's give them uh, another applause. We are living in a special time, and in Europe we need the gospel. And uh, so when things are shaken up as it does now, uh, and also windows are opened for uh, evangelizing, and uh, we've seen this throughout the whole history. During Krieg in Yugoslavia, we were able to. We have a boat which went sailed through a tunnel, and 50 members of our church were able to preach in the former Yugoslavia. And during the war in the Czech, we started 50, 60 churches in in the northern Caucasus. I remember this uh, this uh, boat trip. We went around uh, uh, Tajikistan, where while the the oh, in, in, in Chechnya, while cre uh, while, while war was raging, and also in uh, in Tajikistan, we trained a missionary. We started a an orphanage. We built churches, and these missionaries they went into uh, Afghanistan, and we have seen throughout the whole history when difficult times could be somehow. Uh, good for uh, God, for the gospel, if we just uh, grab hold of these opportunities. Winston Churchill always said, 18th of June, 1940, it was when the British army were driven out of, uh, 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 f uh, f uh, there was the retreat from Dunkirk. And uh, it was as if Hitler was about uh, Hitler's biggest triumph. But in his speech, let us therefore Prepare. Uh, let's think that if the British society uh, people are uh, people going to continue to say that this was their finest moment. Amen. So let's take up uh, a, an offering. There is resource in the church, and so so we can continue to step up and to be light in this time. Amen. 
So let's pray for the collection. Uh, it's so great that I let me say that it's so great to see how the church has stood uh, uh, with us uh, during, for example, St Sebastian Staxet and Tony, they are in Poland in order to build uh, uh, build uh, infrastructure for, and Sebastian went in into, to, uh, into Ukraine. He went into Ukraine tomorrow. Um, so this is because this church is uh, uh, is uh, uh, ready to help and to give into the offering. And the, the collect from last Sunday was just without a parallel, and it was historical. And let's take. Let's take this opportunity. Let's continue to give. Let's continue to just go through this window, which is which has been in Europe and in, in history. So let's pray for this offering. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We do not know thing, how things will go, but we know that this is a time of for the gospel. This is a time when people are seeking truth, and we as a church, we need to step up and be light. That's why we pray that uh, grace over us so that we can take this calling which is upon us now in Jesus' name. God bless, uh, we, God bless this, uh, uh, this collection. God bless every giver. We thank you for all the resources that we, you put in our hands. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your gifts. It's great. Thank you for all the gifts. Those who are, those who are online, those who are here. It's so great to see that. Uh, let, let let me start by just thanking, uh, thank you for this uh, unparalleled uh, extra offering that we took up because of uh, the what happened in Ukraine. We took fifty thousand, uh, took up sixty thousand, and there were more coming. And to our, to our engagement, so I believe that it was about uh, 50,000, and and also there was money coming from uh, 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 from uh, so there's money coming all over the place and all the time. So uh, we got 400,000. We shall buy one more minibus. We will be going in. And so this is uh, a lot is happening. I shall tell you a bit more about that later. But let me share God's word first. So um, I'm doing this well because of the special time that we are in. But so I call this preaching uh, uh, "Steady Faith in Shaky Time." Well, it is a, a very shaky time. And uh, so as we came in, with, as we entered this year, as Pastor Yana Bloom. Uh, he said, "The disperser of uh, uh, of people, sh sh they shall rise up." We got this word uh, uh, around the New Year, and uh, this is really true. And uh, we have our biggest uh, uh, refugee crisis in Europe for uh, in 80 years. It's never been this. Fr 1.23 million uh, in one week. This has never happened uh, in Europe before. Now we are going through that. And uh, let me just share a word. So, and I believe that this this is a year of jubilee, but it doesn't mean that it's a year that's easy. Maybe this can be very tough time. And now we see that there's a lot of things being shaken up. But when it shakes, you and I, we don't need to be shaky. Thank you, brother, for your amen. Uh, I'm sorry. And uh, we don't need to be shaky when things around us are being shaken. Uh, so the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven. Everything will be shaken, but we are not. Uh, so 
If we shake, well, that depends on where you are standing. So, so this is a true history, an American uh, military uh, uh, plane. So they saw they they heard that something is on their way toward them. He said, uh, "You have to move." He said, "No, no, we don't. We are not not going to move. We are a big ship. We can just move you." No, he said. Uh, they said, "We we are not going to move." The, we we. And it was very difficult to move this ship. Of course. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not very sure if this uh, story is true, but when things are being shaken, it depends on where we are standing. So, what do we rely on? And where do we stand? And so, of course, we stand on a rock, on a kingdom which cannot be shaken. We have a God that cannot be shaken. God is not uh, uh, taking, uh, taking. Um, Taking medication to to uh, to calm down. <coughs> God is a fortress for you and to me, a firm foundation. So let's take a moment and let's just uh, let let me tell you some uh, uh, more about what happens in Ukraine. <coughs> Jesus had disciples, and he went with them. He went with them, and uh, they were to take on a, a team trip uh, on the Sea of Galilee. That's in Matthew 8. <coughs> Jesus stepped into the boat, and his disciples were with him. And there was a storm, so that the waves were coming into the boat. Uh, when you have a boat, it's not a good thing, is it? Uh, but he was asleep, and you can ask, uh, well, how is it going to go? And uh, but he was very calm. And but they came and uh, woke him up and said, "Lord, save us! We are going down." And he said, "What? Why are you so afraid?" Have you got no faith? So, and he rebuked the wind, and all was quiet. And then he said, "People ask, who who is he? Even the wind obeys him." And uh, I'm seeing a situation. We can we can apply this. Uh, sometimes things can be shaky. Sometimes it can be really really shaky, and you can wonder how things are going to go. And uh, and uh, some of these uh, disciples, they were fishermen. But in, in a storm like this, you don't want to be in a boat like that. But let's see Jesus' response. He said, "Why are you so afraid?" Well, because for him it was very unnatural to be afraid. Why is that? Well, not because he is not he does not know what's going on, but rather he relied on something greater. And he said, "So little faith you have." And he he put faith against fear. And、uh, this is something I want to. Speak about、uh, steady faith in a shaky time when the boat was shaken. Jesus was not, and the disciples they were shaken together with the boat and also inwardly. And、uh, God does not want us to shake like that. As soon as things around us start to shake, but okay, Christian, you have no idea. I I am the, the sort of that to worry a lot. Of course, then it's great that I'm preaching about this, and we can worry. And part of us. We can be adventure. We can think that when things are not、uh, going well, it's it's boring.、Uh, I believe such people uh, uh, exist, and they are really in their element when there is a crisis. And but God wants us to be、uh, secure in tough times. Just like in the last minute, I I got a telephone from Pamgrad in Ukraine, and the pastor, I, I started to just cry. We 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 spoke a, a week ago. He said, "I sent my sons to the front line, and we stay here to take care of the people." I thought about this. I said to him, "I said, we we love you. We love you." We spoke about,、uh, and he said, "Thank you. You are true Christians. Thank you because you stand with us, and this means so much." So this is shaking, of course, but、uh, it's so fantastic. And、uh, to to see courage rising up in, in these people in the midst of this crisis,、uh, they are not thinking about just going somewhere, but they stayed behind in order to help the people. Why why can they do that? Well, because they have their inner strength, and some they have the faith in God. And Jesus spoke about in Matthew seven. Jesus spoke about about a person who built a house on 
And he said, those who hear my word and, uh, and act accordingly, and he who is like he who builds his house on, on a rock, then when the wind rages, but the house does not fall because his, its foundation is firm. And he said, and also another type, they, they hear my word, but do not act accordingly. He's like a fool that built his house on sand, and the house collapses. And Jesus said that there's a way for us to build, to build a house, namely take our word, God's word, and build our life upon God's word through living out God's word and act accordingly. And this is, uh, this is what it means to live in faith. Jesus says that Jesus can give us uh, steady faith that, that, that does not shake. Well, maybe it does shake, but the, the, the house remains uh, standing. This is the point. God wants us to build a house so that it can uh, subsist and endure. And because of that, uh, we are to be secure in tough times. And uh, this is the promise. Uh, this is hope and faith uh, and the trust in God uh, through tough times and uh, and we can so that we can be secure in Isaiah Jesus uh, God says fear not because I am with you do not look around distraught because I shall give you strength help you uh, support you with my righteousness and my my right hand so God has promised to be with us that's why we do not need to be afraid if God is not with us then it's difficult so so the problem is not about the wind blowing it's about whether Jesus is in the boat or not it can be Jonah he was in a different boat and he was running away from his calling and things went didn't go well for him but Jesus w was with the disciples in the boat and things went well. So is Jesus in your boat? Maybe you and I thinking, okay, think about Putin coming to Uppsala. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Okay, you have to uh, prepare for that. Um, I don't think that this is the biggest uh, 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 worry, but uh, then uh, you and I, uh, you know, it's gonna cost 20, 25,000 uh, uh, crowns in order to uh, tank uh, your diesel. But this is a different question. I'm not, I'm not going to go to talk about the, the environmental party, the Green Party. Okay, this is not a, not a good time. But I just can't stop myself. It was... Uh, so if you like the Green Party, but, uh, but actually I'm not going to vote for them. Uh, I think that we shall preserve our nature, of course. It's it's expensive with diesel. All right. Well, well, things can still work. You just have to prioritize. Let's rely on the Lord. He will take you through that. Six times. Six times. So in time of uh, famine, he shall save you from death. And, and you do not need to be afraid, and you can, you can smile at the swords of your enemy, because you, are, uh, you shall know that your tent shall be stable, and nothing shall, uh, shall, shall, shall lack, and you shall, you shall go to your grave uh, full of uh, uh, um, in old age. So we, we take, so we shall name this every single day, these beautiful verses. But God wants us to be secure in tough times. He wants us to, to be uh, in our daily life, in our normal life. Uh, also, God wants us to be uh, secure in tough times so that He may. Uh, mobilize us. Uh, so I shall come back to this uh, soon. How can we be steady in the midst of shaky time? It's about uh, faith. God says that we are called to live of faith. We believe in God. And we believe in a good God and an almighty God. We believe in a God that does not leave us. When and uh, he draws closer he, uh, in a tough time. I was speaking to a pastor in uh, Russia. Of course, they are also shaky because they have no idea where things are going. They're sitting there with tears. They know that they have tough time because their economy has just collapsed in a few days. 
And uh, they say, we don't know what's going to happen, but we experience God's love more than ever. And, and then they, they shed lots of tears. And, but God, he said, so long as God is with us, and this is some powerful words in the midst of this crisis. And, uh, and this can be your strength and my strength as well. So we do not believe in uh, be, uh, be controlled by our, our feeling. Our feelings can go up and go down, and we can be shaken. But if we fix our eyes on God and on His promises, then we can have a different uh, source of strength in our life. So he, Hebrew 10, 35, he said, do not throw away your boldness because it ta carries with it great reward. And you shall live of faith. And uh, But we are not those who, uh, who uh, retreat, but we are those who win our souls. And it's so important with faith, so that uh, faith means that we do not hide ourselves, but rather we can step forward with boldness. So uh, uh, several years ago, a Norwegian pastor said that, what is, what is boldness? Well, you can be bold in tough time, and uh, it's very special. We have a brother who has worked uh, in Ukrainian uh, uh, in a prison, in six, uh, six or seven prisons, I don't know what it looks like now in those areas, but there are those who work with those uh, people. They work, they go in and go out in, this, uh, in those uh, separatist controlled uh, gray zones where people, um, uh, in order to evacuate people, so they come to West Ukraine in order to get stuff to drive back, in order not to uh, run away. So we're going to buy a bus. We have already a bus on the on the border, which is going to go in. Uh, uh, we're going to buy a bus that will go to uh, West Ukraine uh, in order to evacuate people. We have a family. So part of the family they live here, and uh, there's a parallel a paralyzed person. He cannot uh, move. And these are the things, uh, and so fascinating to see that when the war comes, when the difficult things come. They do not just run away, but rather they, they, they engage into a new gear. The rules of ourselves, when the goings get tough, the tough gets going. It's not like some kind of uh, macho type, but rather it's an inner. There's a, there's a secret, which is their faith in God. Uh, they experience God. They rely on God, that God is going to... Uh, uh, p protect them. That's why they are able to do this. And Jesus has never promised us a life without problem. And in fact, uh, uh, contrary, uh, Jesus said in John 13 that I've told you this so that you can have peace in me, not peace in the circumstance. I'm not saying this, that you will ne never have problem, you always have money in the bank or never have bad weather. Maybe this is a bad example, but you understand And uh, our life is full of problem. But Jesus said, I told you this in order that you shall have peace in me, but in the world you will suffer. In the world you shall suffer. It's not promised us that we will not suffer, but he's promised us that we shall have peace. In the world you shall suffer, but you shall, have, you shall be bold, he said, because I have uh, I have uh, uh, triumphed over the world. Uh, uh, John, in his first epistle, he wrote that for all that is born of God shall triumph over the world. And what's, what's, what has triumphed over the world? That's our faith. Those who believe that God, Jesus is God's son. So you dear children, you are, because those who, who, he who is in you is greater than who he is in the world. And in faith, we will not be broken, we will not collapse, but rather we can stand straight, we can act in faith. And Jesus said that, um, and, and all is possible for those who believe. And uh, God wants us to uh, function in tough time. And, uh, and what uh, God wants us to be secure uh, in, at home in Sweden, of course, uh, 
think he wants things to work for us, uh, for our individual life. And he also, there's, a, some, there's a, another dimension. It's not just about uh, God is with me in my personal life. Yes, of, uh, so Isaiah 60, it's uh, written that uh, the, the prophet Isaiah said that, uh, stand up and shine because your light shall come and the glory of the Lord shall come up uh, upon you. But you have to read the next verse. So darkness shall cover the earth, and, uh, and people shall be under a cloud, but his glory shall be revealed over you. So there are two parallel pictures. One is what's happening around us, darkness, cloud, uh, and, and uh, I can say that it's coming over Ukraine or, or Europe, and, and uh, it's dark, uh, darker than two weeks ago. Uh, the, uh, much darker, but in the midst of this situation, as Runa said, uh, uh, in the, during the dif difficult times, we, ha we can step up. I believe that there's a principle. God just longs that his people or his disciples, his followers, in the dark times that we shall stand up and spread light. And uh, we are not the light, we are only reflectors. Uh, and uh, you, are, uh, you reflect light better when you look at the light uh, and so that you can have something to share with those who are with you. The last Bible verse, that's in Matthew 24. So Jesus spoke about the end time and uh, it was a, an answer to the question because the disciples, they said, uh, how things are going to end up? Uh, and Jesus um, he had this uh, description, I will not read the whole thing, but several verses I will read. You shall hear uh, alarms of uh, 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 reputations of war, or rumors of war, and, but he said, when you hear these rumors of war, make sure that you are not afraid again. He exhorted us to, and he said to the disciples, do not fear. Why are you afraid? Uh, stay in faith. Uh, just believe. Uh, just believe. And he said, fear not. So the first you and I need to do is to not to be afraid. So we as uh, Swedes, you know, we have, I have doubted about it. Just, going, just go out. Yes, go out. Fear not. So, we can be uh, vigilant. We, we must not uh, hang our brain on, 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 on the news. But don't just believe in what you see, but uh, fix your eyes on the Lord in, in the midst of all that. In, during the midst of this, this alarm, this siren, he said, this will happen. This is not the end. People will rise up against people. There shall be kingdom against the kingdom. There shall be war in many places. We have gone through this so many. We have gone into war zones. We have gone through, gone into uh, earthquake zones, and uh, a lot of these places. And uh, why do we do that? Well, um, because we do not live of fear. We are not uh, stricken with fear. We stay in. We dwell in faith in those situations. And uh, you and I, as we look at the situation without God, with God, we can see things completely differently. And Joseph, he was sent not as a missionary, but, uh, well, he was sent by the Lord, but his brothers sent him as a slave. They wanted to just get rid of him. And, uh, and he was able to, uh, to save them from famine. He said, what you intended for evil, the Lord has turned for good. This is what God can do in the midst of all these this sick things happening and all the things happening in Ukraine, and this is terrible. But in the midst of all that, you and I, we can be life givers, hope givers. So just like in this conversation I had with the past, maybe we can just stand firm and be bold. Uh, and if you have friends in Ukraine, and to pray for them, send them, send them encouragement. Verse 14, Jesus said that, so this, shall, this gospel shall be preached to all the people, and then the end shall come. So in the midst of all this happening, so Jesus is asking us to preach the gospel. Maybe you and say, oh, okay, we're going to preach the gospel. Shall we not give them food? Of course, do both. 
Of course, we shall give them food. That's a part of the gospel. Jesus said that uh, uh, be like this uh, good Samaritan, help the, the wounded, but the gospel is a message of hope and salvation now and for the coming world. And that's why we are not ashamed of the gospel even during difficult time. We do not exploit the difficult time. We do not uh, exploit this situation. And uh, for example, and they were asking, why do the Christians come and how do we answer these questions? We can give hope uh, through this. Amen. I believe that we're called for this is, uh, this is what Jesus described in Matthew 24. This is our work environment. Uh, well, no, I like it to be quiet, but uh, all is not uh, quiet and calm. And um, uh, as you look, look back uh, what we have gone through, we have, uh, I know that there are, I've sailed a lot. There are boats which are difficult to sail when the wind is bad because nothing is happening. But when it blows uh, strongly, then they sail much, much better. And uh, I see someone uh, nodding. Uh, it's a lot of fun. To, uh, but we, we like sailing. It was fantastic. And so those boats, uh, they, uh, they, they sail very smoothly on high sea. And, and so we feel the best when, when we have uh, wind. Thank you, Pastor Yana. Uh, we feel the best when it's not too calm. We are made for a tough time. And uh, I, don't, I don't hear any amen. So if you are following us on the internet, so uh, let's look at our history. When we started our church, 83, 89, we were already in the, and even before 89, we were in Russia, Karl Gustav. Which year do you go to, uh, go to Armenia? In 89, it was an earthquake. Uh, we were there directly. In 1990, it was a scud uh, war. We were, the entire, we were the only tourist group in Israel. We were under on the, on, the, on, the, on the roof of the hotel when, uh, when airplanes were flying over, but we were there in Albania, 1991. It was a Maoist, uh, it was a very repressive city in Europe. Uh, Uf Ekman was there and uh, in a stadium. And uh, what did he say? Communism is dead and Jesus is alive. It was not very uh, culture sensitive, but people liked it. So they, they lit up their T-shirt, they bowed down, and all over Albania, people received Jesus. We did things like that. 1992, uh, we took this uh, train and uh, went around and uh, preached uh, in Russia from coast to coast, 93, Yugoslavia. And we, went to, we took a boat and sailed through all these several countries. And uh, people thought we were crazy, but it wasn't. It was the right thing to do. In Baku, 94, it was the end of war. And things were starting to get more quiet. Uh, we went in, uh, Azerbaijan, a lot of such things. Uh, 2014, it was in Donetsk, and which, is le which has led, up, led to what happened today. So we were to go there in a pastor's conference in Donetsk, and they start, it was to start on Friday, but Wednesday they closed the, the airport. And I said, uh, what shall we do? We're going to go in. And we prayed, and we just experienced that we are to go without any worry. So we went to a different airport. We went with a pastor. We went through a uh, roadblock after roadblock, and uh, we went into those separatist uh, uh, area. Uh, it was there were mercenaries, there were uh, and hooligans, and, uh, and it was a very special uh, atmosphere. Uh, 
we had our first meeting and our conference. It was uh, very, very tense. Uh, we went into the city, and it was media from all over the world, and um, and uh, I people looked at each other. Uh, uh, where to ask uh, uh, in order to, they were wondering, are you against me or with me? And when we came home, and uh, we were to uh, drive through a, a, a crossing, but before the crossing, uh, uh, as soon as we got out of the car, uh, there, was a, there was a shooting, and uh, so we had this happening around us. So we had meetings during the day. There were new reports from all over the place, from all parts of Ukraine. People were, there were separatists, uh, and they have been uh, tortured and uh, torturing people. And so we noticed that when you are, the fact, the fact that I was there somehow created a, 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 a connection with those churches there who were strengthened they were saying, you are here now, and, uh, and also in Iraq, for example. Just the fact that you are here now, this is your first preaching, and this is, there's something about uh, uh, going to people when they are in their dire needs. So God has called us to these uh, difficult places. It's so fantastic that we have this network, and uh, that, is, that stretches a larger part of uh, Asia. So now, as the Taliban took over Afghanistan, so we have been pe have people together. Uh, we have that meeting with people who are working there over Zoom. We are talking. We talked about uh, uh, strategy, and we were able to transport uh, resources. We help people out of the country, help into the country, in, in the country, and also before Christmas, uh, we were, were thinking about having uh, having. Uh, so now we'll be going there in a few weeks. Uh, and because there are a lot of uh, another 700 uh, Afghans in Albania, so how can we do that? Well, that's because we have a network in Central Asia, in Afghanistan, and also in Albania. So now the war is starting in Ukraine. We have network in Ukraine so that we can work with them. We have churches there. We have contact in Poland, and so special uh, Runa boys. So we were in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, uh, December. You were not with me. Oh, he couldn't. Uh, okay, in Ukraine, and we met leader leaders, and also our uh, movement there. We were on the streets of uh, Kiev, uh, and that was um, it was it was full of bombardment. Uh, and we went to a different place where we had. Uh, we, and it was a very important time, uh, important time to go there. And last week, Karl Gustav and I, we were in Poland, and we had a meeting with the Polish church, and uh, this everything was hanging like a, like a cloud, and nothing has happened yet. Uh, we were just asking ourselves, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? And they thought. And we had no idea just uh, what's so special. We prayed for uh, that, that first evening. We prayed for the people. Uh, there were 200 members from Ukraine. It was Poland's biggest free church. We, we prayed for this an Ukrainian person. He actually is Russia. He was born in uh, Russia, but uh, raised in Ukraine and uh, lived in Poland. And it felt so powerful. And I just saw a vision. I saw him standing in the midst of uh, a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugees. I got this word for him. I said, uh, he said you, are, you are sent here, I said to this brother. And I uh, believe that this is true for many Europe, uh, Ukrainians who are already in Europe. Uh, and they are, they are waiting for about five millions of their countrymen. So, so I don't know if you remember where you were uh, when 9-11, September the 11th, happened. I was in the cafeteria at Libitsu Church. I remember where I was when uh, Olaf Palmer was assassinated. I was in my student flat. I remember, I remember where I was. And when Karl Gustav uh, came to me, he said, now they have uh, invaded. 
So, so just like uh, the September 11th, it was an important uh, date uh, in their history. Uh, we have uh, 24th of February. Uh, Europe has become like um, never been the same afterwards. But in the midst of all that, we must be uh, aware of different things. And uh, we, what we know now is that we have uh, one, already 1.2 uh, million, uh, 1.2 million refugees in Europe already. And uh, yesterday, there are 300,000 uh, Ukrainians on their way, and that very day, and uh, then the, they are coming all the time. So let me just give give you a few comments uh, about this. It's very easy for us to, to we only see a, a fragment. We look at Facebook and we send it, uh, and. It, uh, there are a lot of information being spread around, and then you can see the uh, the, the first uh, victim of a war is truth. The second uh, victim to a war is nuance. In order to function, we need to see different perspective. There, are, there is the political reality, of course, and there is also the uh, civilian uh, perspective. Uh, where people, uh, where people have no nothing against each other. It's about people's uh, imperial dream and political ambition. Uh, they are just like Sweden and Nor Norwegians. Uh, but uh, sometimes we, we we can we can uh, we can uh, joke about things, you know. Uh, but we don't have to. Uh, we, we don't have to talk about this uh, doping uh, lipstick or that sort of things. Uh, but, but if our regime uh, forced us to go into Norway, you know, I can ask, I have nothing against uh, the Norwegians personally. They have nothing against us either. So what's happening? Well, that's a different reality because there are churches and uh, it's very, and uh, we can be very polarized. Uh, uh, and uh, you and I, we have to be sober. We mustn't just react according to our feeling. It's very easy to. S it's very easy to be sitting in your flat in Osta and send away your twitters, your angry tweet tweets. Well, you know, all the Russians are not in in Ukraine right now, and uh, some are there. We have to have some some uh, uh, sobriety. And uh, let me just say that, um, so what's happening in Ukraine? Well, the war is raging on their ground. It was just uh, surreal to see those cities, to be there, and uh, the church. We have, uh, have, we have friends in those, uh, the, in, those, uh, in those reality. But in the midst of this uh, difficulty, we have churches with which we, we, can, uh, we can collaborate. We can give help. So what happened? Uh, a man must uh, stay in order to defend their country, and many family went to the border. The man went back, and the family separated. It's so great to see a man. We have some pictures, I believe, or maybe. Okay, uh, yes. So this is the de destruction, the devastation. So. I've chosen not to take too many pictures. This is the bridge which, which our uh, collaborator uh, go over every day. That was her way to go to work. You see the picture. You can, and in the midst of all that, um, we have churches and pastors who help their church members who were uh, who were uh, uh, exposed to that vulnerable people. And there, there they can get food, you can see it here. And uh, we have also uh, uh, erected five centers in the Pavlograd and also in Lvov, in, uh, in Poliana, in the, in the west, where they can receive help. Uh, there are roadblocks all over the place, but in the, uh, 
they have 25 people living there in a different place. They have 200 people uh, spending the night, other places 60 uh, spending the night. And uh, we sent money. So this is where the money is going for money, uh, for food, and for, for, for petrol, so that they can transport people and have food. So as they come to the, uh, to the border, we have contacts in Poland, um, and we have this church, uh, uh, and which we get to know. We, uh, we met them, so that we work with, uh, so Sebastian Staxet went there, he took he took them to the uh, to the mayor, so he gets to uh, borrow that uh, meeting location. He and uh, so now uh, there is a transport of medicine from Gothenburg uh, together with Sebastian Staxet and Tony Grad is there, and they were there today. They are there today, and uh, the transport is going in. And also there are uh, refugees coming out, the people waiting at the border, meaning that they can help them further. This is the infrastructure that we are building with our contacts. And then in, uh, in Moldova, we have a church. They, they go to the border in order to help people and find beds for these people. There's a chain of uh, things happening in the midst of devastation through local churches. There's logistics uh, for them to uh, the shelters, and also uh, they have the opportunity so that they can uh, get out of the country. So we work uh, with these. Uh, we have church. Uh, we have uh, bought a van, and and we're going to buy another van. Uh, these so to go into eastern Ukraine. So I want to give you some uh, com uh, comments. We have uh, churches in the separatist-controlled area. Uh, for example, in Donetsk, uh, we were asking uh, how things are going. He said, we have no war here, but it's difficult. Uh, these are not, uh, these are not a Russian uh, army, but rather separatist uh, military. And, uh, and they were, they're, they're, they're in this uh, no man's land. And, uh, uh, they have very bad economy, and in the midst of all that, they are working very hard, this church. And then the question is, but what happens in Russia? What, what are the churches saying? They are, uh, well, do they do something? Well, they, yes, they are. They do what they can. And, uh, for example, many churches, they have been prayer all the time. And in order to, and also they gather resources to pray and to send to Ukraine. They pray for Ukraine. And so what's their position? Well, let me say that there's a large scale. Uh, there are those who are uh, uh, less affected. There's not not a single uh, over uh, sweeping picture for that. There's, as you look at the uh, social media, there's only one picture, and there's. there's and if you, uh, if you, your rhetoric is different from the state uh, rhetoric, you can you can be sent to prison, or you can be sent to prison for up to 15 years if you are engaged in this way. It's not very easy, and uh, so and also there's a war raging in people's mind. Of course, you might feel like uh, let us be aware that uh, there are a lot of information, and there are information on both sides, uh, but. Uh, the Russians, they do not have much access to any other type of information. There's some lead. We have an a umbrella organization. This leader, he, he, said, he said no to the war. He said we need to uh, we need an immediate uh, a fire, a ceasefire. And people were uh, upset, and uh, and uh, so this Russian pastor, they say that you have to understand that we we are doing what we can. We were praying with tears. We see this tragedy, but we uh, um, this is a very difficult situation uh, in in Russia. So it's good to, for us to know, and also in Europe. 
it's so nice to see that in Czech we have contact, we have two churches, we ha they have uh, uh, prepared a few hundred uh, beds and and, and another church, they are able to prepare 30, 40 uh, beds. And then now the question is, what can we do as a church? I believe that we need to prepare ourselves uh, when, the, uh, when the Ukrainian refugees come. Uh, the, the first they come, they have cars, they have uh, relatives, uh, but then there shall be more coming. They have no relatives, they have nowhere to live, uh, and we are we, we will uh, receive a lot of these uh, in Uppsala. So I'm thinking, but how do we... We have been working a lot with these refugees. We as a church, we, we are ready uh, and uh, we, we, we can see how things go, but let's be mentally prepared. See, it's, it's all important to uh, sending help to volunteers. Maybe we also need uh, volunteers uh, at the border so, but, uh, but we also need a lot of help at home, and so let me just lift this up and let's be ready, let's be mentally and uh, spiritually prepared for that so that we do not miss this big need which is uh, under our nose. So let me just ask Pastor, uh, uh, would you please come and uh, pray and pray uh, for this situation. Uh, we will take this to our heart. Uh, name, first, we do, not f uh, we do not fear for in this tough time, and then we shall pray for this situation. Carlo, could you, could you please uh, lead us in, the, in this prayer? Let's stand up. Father in heaven, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for the children who are dragged uh, along the way. We pray for all the people who are suffering, who are struggling uh, because of fear and worry and, uh, and trauma. We pray for the Ukrainian people, these 40 million people who were shut in. Uh, we pray for those who are in Kiev. Uh, Karakov and which are under shelling day and night. We pray for the parents who lost their children, who have died uh, uh, during the, the bombing throughout the night. Lord, we lift up the entire Ukrainian people and our churches there, God's people, all those who are in standing in the Maidan Square, those who are praying for their country. Lord, we pray that they will they shall stop this uh, misery. We go against this, uh, this, uh, this prince of hatred who try to disperse the people or separate people from each other. We lift up these people, all the Christians in Russia. We thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. We thank you that a, a revival shall shall come because of this in the name of Jesus from Nazareth. Father, Father, we praise you, we thank you. We thank you because we can come before your face. We can lift up the entire Ukrainian people, the entire Russian people and all the army we, th we praise you because you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, you who reign and rule over heaven and earth. We praise you. As you went up to the heaven, you said, all power have, has been given to me. And you are the almighty God. We praise you because we can stand against this darkness. We can, your church on this earth, we can stand up. We can as, be as a, as a, as an, resistance against this darkness which is uh, swelling in Europe. We praise you. We can speak about peace and freedom over Ukrainian and the Ukrainian people and also the Russian people. We pray for our church over the whole Ukraine uh, and we pray for the pastors and leaders who are now in a very difficult situation, in a very um, 
dire situation. We pray that you shall come with your encouragement. We praise you. We thank you for all these churches that we have, for all the Christians. We praise you. We pray for our churches in Russia. We pray for Matsula in Russia and all the other churches over this entire Russian continent. We thank you for your grace over all that. We praise you because you rule and reign and you rule and reign in this, in this area. We thank you. We as a church, we can stand uh, prepared in our heart and this has also uh, uh, gripped our heart and, uh, and uh, whatever that needs to be done in helping the people, in open, opening our heart, in giving concrete helps. We want to say to you, we as a church, we are ready, we are ready to go further in our prayer. We are ready to go into pr practical humanitarian help. We praise you, we thank you, worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So worshipers, would you please come? Thank you, Jesus. Before we finish this service, let's thank uh, Christian for your preaching. Let's give him a warm applause. So let us pray for Christian and Carla Runa. They are on their mission. Uh, they, they are working with that. They are, they are also pulling the strings uh, in order to get the international help to work. How do we handle the situation in Russia and also in those areas? It's very important uh, and that God will open doors um, uh, which is needed uh, so that we can help the country as he has already done and, and help us to continue. So let me just name this that Christian uh, said that we do not know how the situation, how the refugee situation is going to turn out in Sweden. But as you heard, we want to be ready. So if you are one of those who can think, okay, if there shall be uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees, I can open my home. Maybe you have a, uh, a room, uh, uh, you have a room or a uh, bed. Maybe you can go to the welcomes counter. Carla Lilia is standing there. And uh, if you have a room, you ha if you have a bed, and you feel you can you can do something, and uh, when they come, then we can be ready for that. And the coming weeks, we shall continue to pray for Ukraine. Tonight, uh, six o'clock. Uh, tomorrow, seven o'clock. And then the rest of the week, uh, we shall keep up. We shall uh, keep you updated on our home page, so you can know how do we pray, where are, uh, when are our prayer gatherings, we have uh, a church meeting, uh, a member meeting on Wednesday. We'll be having the meeting here at seven o'clock. You shall come 6:30 to the orangery, and there you have coffee uh, before the members membership meeting, and. Uh, and we shall inform you more about uh, how do we work concerning this and also what's happening uh, otherwise in the church. And, uh, uh, and the ladies' uh, breakfast uh, ticket you can buy at the uh, boutique after the service. So you can take part in this uh, ladies' uh, breakfast. So uh, let's just open our heart, receive God's blessing, and then we shall finish with a uh, um, parting song. So we speak out this uh, blessing over the Ukrainian people. And the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's praise God. And then we finish uh, here.
Jag tycker att den här predikan var så bra. Jag tycker att det är så viktigt det här med att vi kan stå trygga oavsett hur mycket det skakar för att vi har vårt hopp i ett annat rike. Och det kan vi verkligen ta med oss den här kommande veckan. Att vi behöver inte vara rädda. Jesus säger det så många gånger i Bibeln. Att vi inte behöver vara rädda. Så att låt oss stå för det ordet den här veckan. Yes, och låt oss också fortsätta stå tillsammans i bön för situationen. Vi ber som Jenny nämnde ikväll klockan 18 här i kyrkan. Gå också och ansluta via Zoom. Eh, och sen imorgon klockan 19 också. Eh, sen kommer vi fortsätta be under veckan. Eh, du hittar de tiderna på hemsidan sen. Eh, och sen nästa söndag så börjar vi en predik och serie om, eh, serie om Jakobs brev. Och det är Janne Blom som kommer predika här på Livsord nästa vecka. Innan dess så är det församlingsmöte på onsdag. Det är fika från 18.30 så du som är skriven medlem i församlingen är jättevälkommen dit. Är det så att du har några frågor eller funderingar så kan du också mejla oss på församlingen så svarar vi och hjälper dig där. Tack så jättemycket för att du har varit med och tittat och, och varit med på gudstjänsten här idag. Vi är så glada över att just du är med. Hoppas vi att vi ses i veckan och nästa söndag också. Ha en fin vecka!